we were looking at different tablets. I've taken apart a half a dozen Android tablets looking for what's the best one, what's the one that's most interesting. And we've had challenges with just looking at the, the user interface. One thing that Amazon did that was interesting on the Kindle Fire, the, the new tablet, the Kindle Fire, is they reskin the Android interface. And it's a little bit of a better UI than the standard Android interface. Everyone asks me, can I replace my, my Kindle uh, e-ink Kindle with a Kindle Fire, and my answer is always no because you don't want to sit there and hold the thing while you're reading a book. It's just really heavy. Now, the iPad is about the same weight, but it's a much bigger screen and, and you can do other things with it. The, the, the Fire is really designed to be a super portable media consumption device. I was comparing the Nook Color, uh, which is Barnes & Noble's tablet, with Amazon's Kindle Fire. The Kindle Fire is a little bit thicker, it's a little bit heavier. Uh, the uh, the Nook Color feels kind of elegant. It's got kind of an interesting carabiner approach to it. The, the, the Nook has a upgradable flash memory, which is really nice. You can add storage to it. Uh, on the other hand, the Kindle has access to Amazon Store, and it's much more integrated. So from a usability perspective, I think I prefer the Kindle Fire. But from a repairability, upgradability perspective, I really like that the storage is upgradable on the Nook. The, the battery on the Nook, and this is the case with both of them, uh, but we rated the uh, Fire much easier on repairability because the Nook's battery is glued on there, and it's a lot of work to get the battery out of the Nook which is a problem because everybody that owns a Nook and uses it, within the next year or two, they're going to have to replace their battery. So we really want to discourage manufacturers from gluing things on that tightly, especially when it's something that you're going to have to replace quickly. It might be good to like use a hair dryer to melt the adhesive a little bit, and then pry it gradually. The challenge is that the battery, especially if it's charged, is somewhat dangerous. So what I would probably do is discharge your Nook completely, and then Pry the battery up the best you can, replace it with a new battery, and, and you should be okay. And fortunately, the risk of fire is much lower with an older battery that's decayed than with a brand new battery that's charged tip top. So this is a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. Uh, and, and the Kindle Fire gets really good battery life. It's, it's on par with the iPad. That's something they, they push pretty hard for. So that's, that's exciting. Some of the cheaper Android tablets, like you see some of these tablets you can get for under $150, have much worse battery life. The Nook has one of the strangest circuit boards I've ever seen. The, the circuit board design is a, it, like a picture frame. Uh, and the LCD sits in the middle. And the reason that they did that was to decrease the thickness of the device. So it, normally, you have the circuit board, and then you have the display, and the, the, they combine together to make the device thicker. And they were able to get the Nook thinner by putting the circuit board on the outside of the display so they, they're not additive thickness-wise. Now, I thought that was sort of an interesting concept. I haven't seen anybody else do that, and it's sort of an odd uh, circuit design, but it worked. There are a lot of design similarities between the Kindle Fire and the BlackBerry Playbook. Uh, BlackBerry had been pushing really hard, long and hard for a low-cost tablet. Uh, they came in, they came in at a price point that was higher than a lot of people wanted, and then Amazon was able to come along and take advantage of the scale of manufacturing that that BlackBerry Rem had set up and create a $199 tablet, where $199 is basically their cost because Amazon has other revenue models outside of selling tablets, where Rem only makes money off of selling devices. So Amazon is almost like sticking a knife in Rem's heart by making essentially an identical tablet at a much lower price point than Rem can compete with. And it's really hurting. Rem's financials have not been pretty.